Hello, my name is Thomas, and today I'm going to show you how to create different lighting effects such as these animated emergency headlights using Blender. I'm going to cover the creation process for not only one, but two different types of lighting setups, and we're going to be creating these lights using a combination of math expressions and drivers. To briefly cover my setup, this is a model that I created in Blender and textured in Substance Painter. The world is created using an HDRI from HDRI Haven set to a low strength of 0.1 and then distorted using the scale parameters on the mapping node. The fog is created with a volume scatter node set to a density of 0.03 plugged into the world output. To get started, add a simple glass material to your light object. Then go to edit mode, hit shift S, cursor to selected. Back in object mode, add your first area light. For this light, I selected a disc shape and then I rotated it 90 degrees on the x-axis. To match the color value of your light object, simply copy the hex value of the color from your light object and then copy that same value into the color value on your light. For the brightness, I'm going to pick a fairly high value of 125. Then I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate the light and then rotate it 180 degrees on the z-axis so that it's facing in the opposite direction. Next, offset the lights on the y-axis so they're not both in the same location. Then, add an empty object, plane axis, select both of your lights, and parent them to the empty object. Now that our lights perfectly track to the empty object, we can easily animate the location and rotation. Likewise, we can go for the exact same process to create a searchlight for our turret. Simply select a turret, select the light object, go cursor to selected. Back in object mode, create your area light, rotate it, scale it down, and with the turret, make sure your pivot point is in the correct location and then add a empty object to the exact same location as the turret. Parent both the turret and the area light to the new empty object. As a quick tip, with the empty object selected, lock the transform properties for both the X and Y rotation. This way the turret will only rotate on the Z axis. Going back to our emergency lights, go to top view, select your light setup, hit shift D, and then by constraining it to the X axis, drag it over to the second emergency light. Now that we have both lights set up, select the first empty object, go to the transform properties, and in the Z rotation value, type in the following expression. Hit spacebar on the keyboard to give it a shot, and voila! Likewise, type in the exact same expression for the empty object on the opposite side. With this expression, you can lower the value of the number to speed up the animation and raise the value in order to slow it down. For our second set of lights, I want our light to alternate between a start and end point. So to do this, we're going to select our object Go Shift S, cursor to selected, back to object mode, add in an empty object. I'm using a disk here just as a placeholder. It doesn't really matter right now. And for our light, I'm going to be using a point light. Just like before, we're going to pick the color hex value from our light object and copy and paste that into the color value for our point light. I'm also going to set the power output of the point light to a number of 50. And then I'm going to add a Bezier curve. And I'm going to duplicate our placeholder empty object and take that to the position of the last headlight in the path that I want our point light to follow. Next, I'll select our Bezier curve, go into edit mode. Set the first handle to our start point and the last handle to our end point. And before I animate the path of our light, I want to animate our light so that it is continually blinking throughout our scene. So this will actually be the one instance in which we set any keyframes. So if the point light is selected, we're going to go to the beginning of our timeline and we're going to set the power level to zero. And we'll set a keyframe, either by hitting the diamond or pressing I. We're then going to move ahead with the arrow keys two frames and we'll set the power level to a number of 50 and set another keyframe. We'll then move ahead one more frame and we'll drop the power level back down to zero and set a keyframe. So the power level climbs from zero to 50 and then immediately shuts off. 
Next, we'll open up the graph editor, and with the keyframes on our point light selected, we're going to hit N in the graph editor, go to modifiers, and add a cycles modifier. And with that, the keyframe that we set is repeated throughout our entire timeline. Now, the cool thing about this is that we can make any adjustments that we want to our three keyframes, and the cycles modifier will automatically update that throughout our entire timeline. So say I want the power level to climb to a higher number of 0 to 100. So I can just type in 100, add a keyframe, and maybe I want the buildup to take just slightly longer. So I can move our first keyframe back, maybe one frame, and that is all automatically updated right here in the timeline. So now with your empty object and your parented point light, select the empty object, go to the Object Constraints panel, add a Clamp To Constraint, and with the Picker icon, we can pick our Bezier curve, set the main axis to X, and in the Transform Properties, or by hitting N to bring up the Transform Properties, we're going to type the following expression into the X axis location. Once we've done that, you can hit Space on your keyboard to check if it's working, and there we go. It alternates between the first and last position on our Bezier curve. And next, in order to duplicate this over to the other side, we're going to select our point light, our parented empty object, and our Bezier curve. We don't need the two placeholder empty objects. We'll go to our top view. We'll hit Shift-D to duplicate. We'll bring that over to the other side, then select the duplicated Bezier curve, go into edit mode, and bring the end handle to the last point that we want our light to travel to. It's important to note that you do need to select the duplicated Bezier curve and go into edit mode or else you might have to change the axis of rotation that the driver is applied to. And now that we have this all set up, if we go into render view and we hit spacebar, we can see our final results. Looking really nice. Thanks for watching. If you have any other cool uses for animating using expressions and drivers, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also, consider hitting the subscribe button and the bell notification to get updates when I post any new content. I'll leave links in the description to my social media along with the Blender's documentation on expressions and drivers. Feel free to check those out if you want. Also, if you'd like to use this vehicle in any of your own projects, you can buy it from my CubeBrush store. As an added bonus, here's a coupon code to get 40% off. Thanks.